Well, good morning everyone. We're going to read Psalm 112 this morning. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favour and lender, he will guide his affairs his discretion, with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved for ever, the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established, he shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honour. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked uh, shall perish. In our a brief look at the Beatitudes in the book of Psalms. We turn this morning to a psalm which begins where the previous one ends and speaks to us of the blessedness of the God-fearing man. Praise ye the Lord, says the psalmist. Blessed or happy is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth in his commandments. I think I would be right in saying that in times past, this country in which we lo uh, live and love was once a God-fearing nation, at least generally speaking, and during which it uh, was at its greatest, known not that long ago as the British Empire and held in awe by the rest of the world. In those times, and uh, before it, God was much honoured and worshipped, and the gospel of his Son, uh, Jesus Christ, made known and spread through missionary enterprise across the globe. In such times, the evangelical movement and revival which came along with it was buzzing, especially among non-conformism in the uh, past, spearheaded by men like John Wesley and George Whitfield. Indeed, these were times of widespread uh, spiritual reformation, and churches were full, and God and his word were held with high regard. It's been said, and I believe it to be true, that such rescued us from the revolution and Madame Guillotine that happened in France. However, I don't think it can be said today that we live in a God-fearing land or that we are happy people. From much of what I read in the daily newspapers and hear on the news through the mass media, the opposite seems to be the case. And God is far from being feared, uh, let alone being believed in and having anything to do uh, with our daily lives. As far as most people are concerned, if there is a God, he is up in the heavens and we are down here on earth doing what we can 
to survive and make the best of things under our own steam. Now, this may sound rather cynical and simplistic, and maybe it is, but again, generally speaking, that I think is how the majority of people uh, today see God, if they ever consider him at all, the God of the Bible. How different, though, is the perspective of the God-fearing man who knows God as his creator and redeemer and has personally experienced his love and care uh, through the one who gave himself for our soul salvation at the cross, even his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, in that God spared not his son, but delivered him up uh, for us all. Such, therefore, are those who are the recipients of the blessing, as described here by the psalmist. Firstly, as our verse shows us, they fear the Lord, not with a craven, cringing fear that causes them to back off from him, though he is holy and just, majestic and fearful as far as his hatred of sin is concerned, as Paul puts it in Hebrews 12 verse 29, our God is a consuming fire, but with a profound reverence and veneration for who he is and what he has done for us by his grace and mercy in his great love and compassion uh, towards us. Secondly, they who are godly seek and desire to obey and keep his commands, which is basic to Christian living and which we find summed up, for example, in Mark chapter 12 and verses 28 to 34. That is to say, loving God and our neighbour as we love ourselves. Thirdly, they do not merely obey what God says in his word, but they delight in it. That is why the Bible is so precious and why godly men have given up their lives that we might have its truth in a language that we can read and understand. For example, the church owes a huge debt to the scholarly William Tyndale, whose translation of the Bible into the English language cost him his life, burnt as he was at the stake. That's why the Bible is taught and preached in our evangelical churches and given priority in our worship of God, along with our prayers and singing of the hymns. The Apostle Paul writes, doesn't he, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 21. The ungodly, however, despise preaching today and preachers. And even in the church, there is a move to substitute preaching for drama, open discussion with the idea or the misguided idea that this will be more attractive uh, to the outsider. Yet such is God's way by which, in the power of his spirit, he reveals himself and his word of truth uh, to us. It's been said, for God only had one son and he made him a preacher. At one time in this land of ours, and not that long ago, I might add, we used to have notable preachers who, by the power of God, made their mark on society because people would go and listen to what they had to say. Preachers like C.H. Spurgeon, and in more recent times, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, who had congregations in their thousands at the chapels that they preached in. 
but without being unkind it seems men of their calibre are few and far between who have a voice in this country. How we need to pray that God would raise up spirit-filled preachers once again, but also thank him for those that we do have who faithfully speak to the small congregations in making his word known. Well, God enjoys blessing his people, making them happy. But there are conditions. We must fear or reverence him, obey him and delight in his word. And we will do these things if we truly and deeply appreciate the greatness and goodness of God in his works and to us personally. Yes, blessed or happy is a man that feareth the Lord and delighteth greatly in his commandments. So be happy. Let's pray. Again, we thank you, O oh God, for your precious word. We thank you that we're able to read it and to understand it in our own language. We thank you for those who in, in times past uh, gave up their lives that this might be so. We pray, O oh Lord, that in such times as these, when your word is not heeded or listened to, or given its rightful place in our land, by our own people, we pray, Lord, that you will do a reviving, a work of reviving in this day and age in which we live. We pray even through this uh, pandemic that uh, many will be caused to seek you and to read your word and through it fear you, reverence you. Pray Lord that um, this might be so. However, we ask, O oh Lord, today that you'll bless us and be with us. Pray that we may uh, know your help and your presence in the things that we have to do. Pray, Lord, that uh, you will be with our families and our friends, that you will guard and keep them and watch over them uh, during uh, this uh, time of difficulties. Lord, here is in our prayers. And continue with us, we ask, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. And uh, hope you'll tune in to uh, the last of this series on Beatitudes in the Psalms.